Hello all, I uh, am working on my Union Troops now, and so starting to get them painted up. Uh, this is ultimately what I'm going after, uh, your standard Union Troops. So the beautiful thing about the Union is they are much more standardized in their paint scheme. So light blue pants, uh, kind of a, a navy or Prussian blue top and kepi. Um, and then uh, standard issue bedroll was typically gray. And then you had um, some variation in the canteens. This is a light blue. You have also tan or you have um, you know, white as well. So um, doing that and then also some of the leather work is black for the most part. So kind of hard to pick up in here, but that's that's kind of how I, I work it. So for the first time ever, I uh, actually spray painted, base coated my troops white. Um, typically, I never do that. Uh, I'm always going with a tan or a gray, but uh, with these Union Troops, trying to brighten them up since they're 6mm and so small, I knew that I needed to base coat them a, uh, a white. And then I have an airbrush, and so I came back in and then used this uh, Model Air uh, Vallejo uh, Steel Blue, um, and I put a nice layer over top of them. I then came back in with... Uh, a dry brush just like I did on the Confederate troops with a Prussian blue. Um, this is just your standard model color. Uh, dry brush that over top. You can't see it uh, very well but it is enough to kind of highlight the troops and draw out some of the details so it does make it easier to paint I find. These are Adler, Adler troops um, so uh, I'm gonna paint them up. I put them on a popsicle stick and I got three um, three uh, sticks of Adler miniatures on there. Um, so 12 troops per stick. I typically paint up about five or six sticks at a time, maybe even up to seven or eight, depending. Uh, Union troops just go much faster for me. So um, it's a very simple paint. Um, you got uh, your, your pants, uh, which I use model color, deep sky blue. Uh, your white is just your standard model color white. Uh, I use Vallejo um, Model Air black. I also use light gray for the uh, bedroll. I use the Model Air uh, Armor Brown for the gun and probably on these guys the hair. I use the Model Air Silver and then last thing I put on is the Flat Flesh model color um, just to pop out the skin. So Without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. I guess I gotta squirt some blue out here first. I use a wet palette. Probably really don't need to use a wet palette on six millimeter troops, but again, it just seems to go easier. So I'll do my best. I got the camera set in one angle to try to not uh, be as bad. I'm also kind of working with a new brush here, so my other one just got too curly to use. So I have to relearn how to use a straight paint straight paintbrush. Good thing about having them base coated in a blue is uh you know, even if you miss something, you put that Agrax Earth shade over them at the end, and that pops out the details, but also it hides a lot of um, mess up sort of misses that you had. And again, I'm working with the camera right in front of my face, so it doesn't quite go as smooth as I hope it would. I do believe these troops go faster for me because they're simpler to paint. Uh, I don't think it's quite cut in half, but it definitely goes a little faster for me. 
One other thing that I've uh, recently started doing is I turned my desk into a standing desk. So I just have a kind of a shelf unit um, that my dad was able to make me. And I use that to stand up and paint on. And I think that that helps me actually go a little faster. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and just put the dot on for the canteen. Like I said, you can paint that multiple colors. I uh, have so many troops that I feel like it's uh, faster if I just paint one block of troops, one strip of troops, uh, all the same. And then the same thing will happen with the bed rolls. The bed rolls, I put some variation in. I will use green or red or some other colors besides br uh, gray just to kind of make the Union troops look a, look a little bit different. So I think I'm going to adjust the camera. So I'm going to work a little bit farther away from camera angle. All right, um, so simple enough. Next up is the black. So like I said, I paint the leather black. For the most part, most uh, Union troops just had leather things that were painted black. So on the back side here, we have uh, the knapsack and then also the cartridge box. So a um, little tricky to get to on these Adler Menors minis because of the way the uh, minis are put together. You could, if you wanted, uh, to paint the, the shoes. Uh, these guys don't have a terribly dramatic pose, so I'm not going to worry about painting the shoes because I'm going to use flocking with some static grass in there uh, to base them so they will uh, be hidden by those uh, that grass. Check on this side. This is probably the better side to actually paint this. This black typically blends in once you put the uh, earth shade on, so they go away pretty fast. But it's worth painting. Um, the other thing I do is I paint the brim of the slouch hat. Just swipe my brush across the front. Again, this part uh, picks up a lot of the um, wash, and so uh, it's just making sure that it's, it's black. Next, I'm going to paint the... Maybe. I'm going to paint the uh, uh, bedroll. So, bedrolls on this, I paint from two sides the front to back. Let's make sure I get over the shoulder. On the other side, the bed rolls are kind of tied at the bottom around the canteen. So there's actually two little spots to paint there and there. Sweep down the back, hit the front. If you watched any of my other videos, you know that I tend to base pretty thick. So I put seven to eight, maybe even nine um, 
figures on a stand. So it gives you a really nice masked unit effect. Um, I don't intend to pay play a regimental um, Fire and Fury, so I double base them on a stand. So that's pretty much it on the bed rolls. Next up is the brown. So on these troops, I tend to paint their hair either black or brown after I paint the gun or the rifle. So come in, sweep the rifle front and back, and they do the hair after that. Got a little too much paint, so I'll do the easy parts and come back in. Get kind of in between the arms. Flip it over. This side tends to be a little easier, but I messed up and got more paint on there than I needed. Here it doesn't matter if you paint over the, the hands or anything, you just want to make sure you get top and back coverage. It's such a slim little sliver of brown that it tends to roll over the front and top and bottom of the gun. And then I want to make sure that I hit the base, uh, the, the butt of the stock underneath his arm. Get that. And then I work on one side at a time for the hair. Just sweep across. Since they're wearing kepis, I worry about the hair. When I was working with the Confederates and their caps, I didn't worry nearly as much. Or their hats, I guess. And I come in and do the other side as well. Got to try to not let a lot of blue show through where there's not supposed to be blue or else they'll end up looking like Smurfs. All right. Next one is silver. Just a little. The best way to attack these is on this side of the miniature, I think. And then I sweep up and out. A little more control. These Adler miniatures have uh, bayonets on them, so they're pretty um, long. And to really get the bayonet all covered, you have to go back in and attack it on both sides. But you make pretty quick work. I find when I'm painting these minis that uh, it really seems to go faster if I uh, do just one spot at a time and work down instead of trying to do all the same spots of color on the minis when I work a mini. So particularly you'll see this on the skin for the most part 
I'll go through and I'll paint the hands on one side and then I'll go through and paint the face on one side and then I'll flip it over and I'll do the same thing uh, for me that just I work a little faster when I do that so first thing I do I got hands on both sides so for these I hit them just so you can see that hand wrapping around the rifle. If you watched my uh, Confederate painting video, you saw that I spray painted them base coat of them brown or beige for butternut and that uh, and then highlighted that and then came in and to me that just makes painting these go so much faster if you can get that um, these Adler miniatures are pretty detailed really to me they're as detailed as 10 millimeter figures so if you wanted to, really wanted to I think you could come in here and put the belt buckles on and do lots of stuff to them um, you really have a chance to kind of draw out the details if you like. But I don't like to. I'm painting these to play. All right. And then sweep across the face. All right, so that's it for the paint, really. Um, I probably yacked for four minutes at least before I started, so I'm right at uh, 12, 13. 14 minutes um, for getting 12 figures done. Um, a minute a figure, basically. Next thing I do is I'll come in, same Earthshade, Agrax, Citadel stuff that I used on the Confederates. This really darkens them up, and so you'll see why I, uh, well, you've already seen why, why I uh, painted them a lot lighter to begin with. This is probably uh, stupid to be putting this earth shade on as fast as I am. There might be some wet paint still out there, but for the most part, it looks like they're dry. Again, I try to work up a little bit with the uh, shade. That tends to make sure that it gets up underneath the, the crevices and places that would be shaded. All right, so that's it. Uh, just under 19 minutes, so not too bad, pretty fast. Uh, I think um, obviously they're shiny right now, but uh, they will dull out, and that's what they'll end up looking like. So happy with how they're going, and they're going pretty fast. So I hope that helped, and hope it uh, helps your uh, your gaming and your painting and hobby. So, of course, the bell's got to ring right when the video ends. That's it. I'll talk to you later.